dear basketball friends, hello and welcome in the first episode of Six Alpe Adria Cup show. In the next 30 minutes you will get to know the new founder league a lot better, we talk with the most patriotic coach in the league and we will remember the times when NBA star Nemanja Bilica was starting his career in Austria. We will of course show you the highlights of the first round, but first we have to get to know the league better. The idea for the 6th Alpe Adria Cup began in Domžale. As the new season approached, it looked like Helios Sanz would only play games in the Slovene National Championship. So, the idea for the new league was born. We thought we would have a team that was very quality in the space, which was not a memory of Europe. In we came to the idea that we would have clubs from the area, in a radius. It's clear that the clubs are not very technical costs, because we know that every euro is included in They send the invites to clubs they knew would be competitive, close to one another and with not too many games on their schedule. Smo pogledal v državajo Italija, Avstrijo, Mađarsko, Slovaško, Hrvaško in v bistvu iz tega področja proba za prvo leto bom rekel poskusno nabrat neko število kvalitehnih klubov, ki bi bili zainteresirani za to ligo. The second team from Slovenia that got the invite is Letorok from Laško. No special presentation is needed for the KK Zagreb, long-time member of ABBA League, Croatian champions in 2011 and three-time winners of the Krešimir Čosic Cup. The second team from Croatia is Kvarner. Kloster Neuber Drux and Trais Hirhen Lajos represent Austria. Lions won the Austrian National Championship three times, but they are more known as a club in which current NBA player Nemanja Bilica jump-started his career. Dukes are even more successful, they won the national title of Austria ten times. In 2012, they became only the second team from the country who won all three domestic competitions. The last two teams in the league are from Slovakia. Previdza won five national championships, the last one in 2012. The last team in the league are Levički Patrioti, who are trying to become one of the best Slovakian teams again. As we all know, no league can function without a sponsor. The feedback after the first round of competition is a raving success. Moram priznat da so te klubi, ki nastopajo, bom rekel, so zadovoljni z tekmovanjem, jasno, prvo leto in najtežje leto. Probamo narediti to ligo dejansko atraktivno, da tudi medijsko pokrijamo, da bi bil interes čim večji in jasno po zaključku letošnje sezone po Final Foru, ki ga bomo organizirali v Domžalah v začetku marca, bomo potegnili črto pod prvo sezono in se odločili naprej kako za naslednje. The teams are split into two groups. They play a round-robin system until the middle of February when the playoffs start. After the quarterfinals, the Final Four tournament is scheduled to be played in Domžale. There were 17 games played in the first round of the league. In Group A, Kvarner beat Helios Sanz. The team from Rijeka suffered their only defeat against Levice, who lost in a convincing fashion against Helios. Tres Kirchen Lions are still looking for the win, they suffered four defeats. Kvarner is in the first place in the group with three wins and one defeat. Patrioti are in second place, Helios is third, 
The last place is occupied by the lions. In group B we saw two convincing Prijevica wins against the Dukes. Zagreb is the only team that beat the Slovakian team, but they lost against the Dukes. Prijevica is in the first place, Zagreb is second, Dukes are third, Zlatolo Hlaško is in the last place. It's now the time for the highlights of the best games of round one. We'll start the highlight section of the show in the Nike Arena. Prijevica hosted Zlatoru Klaško. The first half of the game was a back and forth affair. Laško went into the first break with a four point lead. Zlatoru played better, they were ahead 22 to 17, but Prijevica came back and in the 16th minute the host took the lead. The score at the half was 31 to 29 for the home team. Jaitor Naviza was on fire, he had 12 assists and he was the main reason that the lead for the Slovakian team grew. Matej Krušić was the best scorer for Laško with 17 points, Goran Jurek added 10. In the 37th minute Prebica started an 0-0 run that all but decided the game. The best scorer of the game was Igor Martic, his three-pointers percentage was 83, Jaitorna Wiese finished with the highest index 27. In the end Previdza 79, Laško 72. Kloster and Burg hosted Zagreb in the third round, both teams gave the opportunity to their younger players. The game was closed throughout the first quarter, Dukes went ahead, but Zagreb tied the game. At the beginning of the second quarter, the team from Croatian capital actually took the league 22-21, but then they hit the wall. Klostenburg went on 11-0 run, their lead grew to plus 16. Zagreb played in waves, they tied the game in the 25th minute, it was 51 all. It was a nail biter from then on, after a three pointer from Marcinkovic, Zagreb tied the game at 72. They took the lead after the next successful attack, but lost their focus and Klosternburg finished the game strong. They won with 84 to 79. The best player from the team from Austria was Jozo Rados with 18 points. Luga Božić scored 21 points for Zagreb. We now move on to Sport Nova Hala in Levice, Patrioti hosted Kvarner. The host started better, but the team from Rijeka found the form and they were ahead 24 to 20 after the first 10 minutes. Kvarner went on the 9 to 0 run at the start of the second quarter and it was time for the head coach Teo Hoj to react. His team responded great, Patrioti went on their run, after 16 straight points, they only trade by one. The home crowd pushed their heroes and they rewarded them with good performance in the second half. Momčilo Latinović played a great game, he finished with 20 points, Miloš Marković added 17. The best player for Kvarner was Peter Maric with 18 points, the ex-Union Olympia player Paolo Marinelli added 11. Patrioti were ahead for as much as 26 points, the end result was 86 to 64 for the team led by the head coach Teo Hojic. We will get to know him better in the next clip.
After a few months abroad, Teo Hoc returned to Slovenia for one day. He was the head coach of Gross Basket last season, but he decided it's time to move, so he chose Slovakia. To je naš, naš, naša služba. Greš tam kako misliš da je bolj za tebe. In uh, jaz sem se odločil, da grem. Dobil sem po bilo malo po koncu sezone strani Levic. Iskal sem mladega trenerja uh, iz področja bivše Jugoslavije, ker zelo cenil naše, naše prostore. Uh, in sem sprejel. Šel sem malo v neznano, ampak zdaj ta hip sem se dobro počutim tam uh, in mi ni žal niti malo. The former head coach of the Kirka youth team was enamored with the support for his new team and he became a patriot himself. Patriot sem postal, sigurno. Uh, sem se kar malo zalubil v, v celo zgodbo tam. No. Res sem bil presnečen na tem, kako emotivno in kako, kako srčno spremljajo našo ekipo, kako so veseli po zmagah, kako nas podbujajo po porazih in je krasno občutek res biti bit tam. Mi smo prodali prek 300 sezonskih vstopnic, kar mislim, da je za Slovenijo ne vem, če ima kdo po prodanji postopnic v Sloveniji, če se motim, se upravičuje, ampak vseeno, kakorkoli, to je lepa številka. To je 300 sezonskih in vsako tekmo najmanj, oziroma bom rekel tako povprečno, imamo 1200 gledalcev. Spravi to, če je povprečen obisk. Zdaj, po dobrem štartu, po po tem, da je, da je navijača mošeč naša ekipa, imamo polno dvorano. To je zdaj uradno 1800 ljudi, tudi mogoče krešen več. After two hard years of rebuilding, the club is slowly getting back into the old tracks. Pred tremi, štirimi sezonami je bil ta klub, naš klub, državni prvak v Slovaške. Imel velik proračun, visoke cilje, potem pa se je zgodil, kar se je zgodil. Glavnemu in edinemu sponzorju ni šlo več v njegovem poslu, je odstopil od financiranja kluba in je bilo na tem, da bo klub šel v bistvu, da ga ne bo več. Potem pa so te ljudje, ki tudi zdaj trenutno vodijo ta klub, zbrali skupaj, probali rešiti zadevo, imeli zdaj dve slabi sezoni, niso se uvrstili niti v play-off dvakrat zapored in letos s tem startom sezone so, so izjemno zadovoljni in računamo nekaj na sredino Lestvica, kar bi bil lep uspeh. They joined the 6th Alpe Adria Cup mainly to get experience, as their players didn't have the opportunity to play in the European competitions. But the players aren't the only ones who are learning, which is getting better and better in the Slovakian language. I've been trying to do this all the time, and from a lot of respect to the people who work, I've been learning the Slovakian language. It's a little bit like when I'm up. Uh, ampak nekaj besed že lahko spregovorim teh, teh uvodnih. Z ekipa pa večinoma v angleščini, ko pa pride do kakšne situacije, ki, ki me vrže iz tera, pa gremo tudi na kakšno našo bolj, bolj, bolj domačo besedo. Zdaj, ko greste po kruh, ni težav kupiti kruha? Ne, ni težko. Uh, tudi, ko grem na kavo, ni problem, ker sem vesel, da je tako, ampak kave si recimo ne, težko plačam sam, ker se ljudje spremljajo košar, ko vsi vejo, zakaj gre in so veseli, da, da mi lahko dajo kavo v lokalu, tako da je fajn. We are back on the basketball court. It's time to look at the game between Privica and Klosternburg. The home team came into the game with a win against the Torok and a loss against Zagreb, but they were playing without four very important players. They didn't miss a beat. It was one-way traffic all the way. The lead grew and grew, and at the end of the first 10 minutes, the score was 26 to 9. It was also a great game for the home team reserves, who scored 61 points at the end. The stampede continued in the second quarter, it was 58 to 28 at the half. Both coaches gave the opportunity to the younger players in the second half, but the story was pretty much the same. Mike Rostampur finished the game which ended with 104 to 62 with 22 points and 9 rebounds. The best player for the Austrian team was Jozo Rados, he scored 16 points and added 11 rebounds for the double-double. It was also a special location for the 16-year-old Jakub Kadasi, as he scored his first points of the competition for Previdza. <music> 
14 days after the record-setting win against Klosterlenburg, it was time for Prijevica to visit the team from Austria. The home team fought better this time. Prijevica was only ahead by six at the end of the first quarter. Dukes were creeping closer and closer. It was their center, Jozo Rados, who played great. Rado signed a tour extension with Klosterenburg just day before the game. Dukes were only behind two points at the break, but then the power went out and Previdza took control of the game. They hit 12 three-pointers and the lead grew to 69-48. to Jay Orna Wieser was on fire once again, he finished the game with 27 points. The last 10 minutes totally belonged to the guests, who won in the convincing fashion. The score was 102 to 62. Kilio Sans hosted their first home game of the league against Levice in round 5. It was an important game for the home team, the win was a priority after the loss in the first game. The Suns started great. Hugh Robertson hit two three-pointers and added a layup and a free throw. Jan Mochnik played a great game as he didn't miss a throw and finished with 19 points. The second quarter was even better for Helios, the lead grew and grew and it was plus 21 already at the half. It was clear that a coaching change in Domžale was the right decision, this was the first game for the head coach Jakša Vulic. He gave the opportunity to his young players in the second half and all 12 scored at least one point. The lead grew to as much as 40 points. The score at the end was 90 to 52. A week after the big win, Helios hosted Trajskirchen, the team where NBA star Nemanja Bilica began his great career. Danek Benedikt and Fabrizio Wey remember him very well. They were part of the team when Nemanja came to the Lions. I remember him very well. He was a very talented player. He was very skinny. Uh, he was not so athletic like we know him now in, in NBA and EuroLeague. But you could see uh, big potential. He was uh, really tall, like 2 meters 8 with 19, 20 years. And, uh, and playing every uh, position of the floor. He was. He was seeing the people he could pass, he was, he was playing like a point guard and you could see his big potential, long arms and, and he did a good job and nobody really could know what will happen, what big step he would make and we are all very happy for him, we are very proud. As he came to Austria he had some injury problems but he didn't quit, he worked hard. Era como un poco tímido, no muy seguro de, de sus cualidades como deportista, eh, que estaba empezando, que no sabía, pero gracias a Dios luego explotó una bestia ahora. But even then he was dreaming about playing with the best. His goal was to reach the NBA. He was always dreaming. I mean, you hear it from a lot of young guys, uh, but you never take it so serious because it's it's always the dream of a, of a player. Uh, but yeah, he was very humble. Like he was very humble. He was working really hard. He was he was giving the the best he, he could. Like in, in practice, you could see that he's a smart player, and he was he was working on his game very well. He was working on his shot. He's an amazing shooter, and you could see it back then that it's gonna develop a, a great player. He could rely on his height, but he had the ability to play all the positions on the field. 
era un chico de 2 metros 8 que podía jugar de base, de escolta, de ala pivot, de pivot, pero le faltaba el condimento de darse cuenta de que podía ser especial y me parece que una vez en, en Austria empezó a, a ver esas cualidades, pero una vez que tuvo la chance de ir a Estrella Roja en Serbia y trabajar, lo pudieron pulir y es el diamante que es hoy en día. After the 2008 season, he returned to Cervena Zvezda Beograd, where he really became a star. He proved that the talent isn't everything and you have to work hard to achieve your goals. We had some crazy talents, even more than Bielica, but who didn't make it nowhere? You never know. It's about uh, attitude, it's about the heart, and it's a lot about luck, I think. You have to have the right uh, situation in the right time. I think also for him, for sure, it was luck was a big factor. The Lions are still waiting for the next Nemanja Belica to emerge. They certainly would need him in Domžale as they lost the game 71 to 81. After a tough loss in Domžale, Patrioti were determined to play a better game in front of their home crowd in Hala Sportova. But it was the guests who started better. The score after first 10 minutes was 23 to 11 for the Spurs. Patrioti began to play better in the second quarter. All of their players gave their best and they closed the gap. At the break, Helios only led by two. It was a back and forth affair in the third, the teams traded punches and we had to wait until the last 10 minutes for the game to be decided. Patrioti started their 18-2 run and Helios Sanz had no answer. All they can do was to score some easy points at the end of the game. The score was 74 to 67. Miloš Marković finished the game with 13 points for Patrioti. Jan Močnik and Žilko Zagorac were the best players for Domžale. These were the highlights. Let's look at the schedule. In Group A, there are three games left. Helios will host Kvarner and travel to Trajskirchen. Lions then travel to Slovakia to meet the Patriots. In Group B, Zagreb has to play two more games. Zlatorok, Previdza and Dux are left with one. This is all for today, we will finish the show with the best actions of the round. Enjoy, we will see you at the final four in Domžale.